station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we're ready for the event. ABC News, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Uh, station, this is ABC News Chief Health and Medical Editor, Dr. Rich Besser. Uh, how do you hear me? Dr. Besser, we have you very, uh, loud and clear. Good to talk to you today. Oh, great talking to you. Well, I want to welcome our audience to this very special ABC News live stream, uh, streaming on ABC News Digital. Okay, we're not live yet. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do that again in, in a second. Thank you both for, for being here. I really appreciate this. You bet, our pleasure. Welcome to a very special ABC News live streaming event. I'm going to be talking with two American astronauts, uh, Flight Commander Jeff Williams and Dr. Kate Rubens, live from the International Space Station. This is live streaming on all of ABC's digital platforms as well as, as Facebook, uh, 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 Facebook Live. Um, uh, uh, I want to welcome our two astronauts. Uh, Flight Commander Jeff Williams is about to set a record for the most cumulative days in space. Uh, it will be a total of 534, and Dr. Kate Rubens is, is on her, her first uh, space flight. Um, Kate, I want to I start by asking you a question. I, I understand that both of you went on a spacewalk at the end of last week. It was your first spacewalk. So I want to get a sense, um, what did that feel like? What were you trying to do? What did it feel like just being out there in space outside of the, of the capsule? Yeah, well, we train, we prepare for these spacewalks. Uh, it's been about seven years, actually, since I've been at NASA, and we start our spacewalk training uh, very early on. So it's been a number of years, and you get a really good sense of what to expect in terms of the tasks that you're doing. Uh, we got a chance to bolt the international docking adapter to the front of space station. But nothing quite prepares you for that first glimpse when you open the hatch and see the entire planet below. Uh, I'm not even sure what I said. I think it was something like wow or phenomenal. It's just uh, an amazing experience. Uh, and one of, one of your big projects is focused on sequencing DNA. And I, I was wondering, can you explain um, why you're trying to do this in space? What capability will, will that, that give you that you haven't had before? Yeah, so it's both a technology demonstration as well as an actual platform for future sequencing in space. The tech demo part of it is that we're trying to understand, can we even use this technology off-world as it, as it is? Um, because uh, it's very dependent on fluids and surface tension and, and uh, bubbles. And so we're doing a lot of just the, the tech dev side of things to see what we can do off the planet in terms of modern molecular biology. In terms of a capability for the space station, this just opens up the entire world of genomics. So anytime you would have something for uh, diagnosing a disease, uh, our, our bone and muscle degeneration up here, you can actually look at this, the uh, sequencing data to understand that. We can understand the microbial world up here. We can try to understand uh, all of the different kinds of uh, ECLIS systems, the environmental life support systems that we have up here that constantly recycle our air and our water. We can use sequencing to start probing all of those different systems. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, Jeff, you're, you're about to set a record for, for the most days in, in space. Um, when, when Scott Kelly came back, there was a lot that was learned about the effects on, on his body. And, 
you know, as a, as a physician, I'm very, very intrigued by um, what some of the, the big effects of space on, on the body and whether there's anything that was learned from his mission that you're trying to do differently to lessen the impact on, on your body. Well, I think we're all doing basically the same things. It's just that the, his duration was much longer than the typical duration up here. Uh, but yeah, there are effects. We know we have known effects on, uh, on, on not on everybody, but on some people, on vision. And of course, that's a very significant thing. And uh, so we're trying to study that to understand understand the root cause, the mechanism, so that we can uh, hopefully develop countermeasures for it. Uh, we the air we breathe here has a little bit higher level of CO2 than we breathe on the ground, and that has some impacts uh, on the body, not all of which we we fully understand. So that's another area of uh, of uh, investigation. Of course, we know in a weightless environment, your muscles and your bones atrophy. We understand that pretty well. We've developed countermeasures to keep our bone strength up over the years in the space station. That's been one of the great advances accomplished uh, during the time of the space station uh, to maintain uh, uh, bones and, and muscle strength, So, but uh, very important. And of course, there, there are other maybe less uh, visible or less significant items that we're studying in the human body too. But that's uh, one of the, the main areas of study on board the International Space Station. Of course, that's gonna help enable future space exploration leaving Earth orbit. So you know, I, I'm an infectious disease guy, and I'm, I'm intrigued by, by risks of, of getting infections when, when you're in space. So uh, a, question, a question I have is, can you catch a cold in space? And if so, where do, where do those viruses come from? And the big question that a number of us had here is, if you sneeze right where you are, does that sneeze stay in the air in your in your capsule for all time because of the microgravity environment? Those are some great questions. I'm also an infectious disease researcher, so uh, I, I uh, really appreciate that line of thinking. Um, so we actually, it's, it's pretty nice up here. Uh, everybody that comes up to the space station goes into quarantine, and so we actually are very protected from viruses up here because we don't have uh, a lot of other humans around to pass those viruses on to us. So you really can't catch a cold up on space station. Um, but we, that's not to say we don't have microbial life up here. There's microbes everywhere. They're, uh, they're on our skin, they're in our digestive system, they're, they're all over on the equipment on space station. Um, and it's, it's not a sterile environment. It's probably not a good idea to have it be a sterile environment because you don't want a bad microbial population to take over. A, a fair amount of good microorganisms is a good thing. And, and that is one of the things that we're very interested in um, with things like uh, there's a new real-time PCR machine, a sequencer, uh, a glove box, the ability to do cell culture. These are all the uh, cutting edge molecular biology tools we need to understand microorganisms on board space station and how that complex microbial life is interacting in this space environment. It's a completely different environment than we've ever been able to study microbially on Earth. So uh, those of you who are watching on Facebook, feel free to, to add your questions. We have some com coming in. Um, I want to just follow up on that because I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated by the whole microbial thing. Did they study your microbiome, the, the bacteria and organisms that are in and on your body? And um, um, how does it play in that, that you're on a space station with astronauts from all over the world who, who may have microbiomes that are, are quite different? Yeah, that's a great question, and we are studying the microbiomes uh, of all astronauts. Uh, we've got uh, quite a few studies going on. We're looking at both the microbiomes pre- and post-flight, as well as on board, what happens to your microbiome uh, when you're in space. Um, we do actually travel quite a bit internationally, so um, we are all over the globe before we launch because we train with our international partners in Russia, in Europe, in Canada, in Japan. Um, but then we do have we do have folks all launching up here, and so the question is, uh, how do microbiomes change up here? Is there an influence uh, because of microgravity? It's hugely influential in our human physiology, 
So how does that influence microbial physiology? And then also, uh, is there an effect due to the radiation environment? We've got a completely different environment up here where the microbes are subject to some radiation. So over the course of 16 years, we've had the space station up here, and the microbial communities have been under this constant effect of radiation. Uh, so all of those are great questions. We're answering that with the research on space station right now, and we think that it's going to have some pretty big impacts for our understanding of microbial populations back on Earth. Uh, we have some, some questions coming in on Facebook and uh, a, a number of questions that are, are dealing with the issue of, of sleep. Um, uh, and I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what it's like to, to sleep uh, in the space station. Um, do you sleep floating? Um, do you lose your circadian rhythm, that kind of natural rhythm that the body has? And does that make you a, a little bit crabby? Well, the last is uh, easy to answer. No, we're not typically crabby up here. We're, uh, we're tired. Uh, I think you, you do get to a level of fatigue uh, that you can sustain for a long period of time. Uh, and, and everybody varies, of course, just like on, uh, on the planet. Uh, everybody's individual characteristics vary in terms of sleep uh, ability. Uh, but yeah, you touch on some, some real issues up here. We do float, everything floats up here. Uh, so each of us have a private crew quarters. It's about the size of a, of a phone booth, uh, for those that remember phone booths out there. So, but it's enough room to, uh, to have some uh, private space. You can close it up and, and uh, make it dark and, and it's a little bit quieter. Uh, we have a, each have a sleeping bag that we tie to the wall of that uh, crew quarters, uh, and that keeps us from floating around at night uh, and banging into things. It also keeps you warm, obviously. Um, and sleeping up here is, uh, is uh, pretty good. Um, I have to, personally, I don't sleep as sound up here as I do sometimes on, on Earth. Part of it is the environment, uh, I suppose, of weightlessness, but part of it also is that you need to be ready to wake up and deal with some kind of a system failure or emergency at any time. So that's on your mind. In terms of circadian rhythm, most of us uh, have a natural circadian rhythm that's about 24 hours, but some are a little plus and some are a little minus 24 hours. Uh, we go around the earth every 90 minutes, 16 times a day, so sunrises and sunsets don't give us the cues that you have typically on the planet. Uh, so you, we work off time, we work off the schedule, and uh, uh, the schedule tells us when the day's over, the work day's over, it tells us when it's time to go to bed, and, and we're pretty disciplined about uh, getting lights out about bedtime and getting the sleep we need. We work a 24-hour day, and uh, we typically work on Greenwich Mean Time, getting up at 6 in the morning and in bed about 10 o'clock at night. Uh, uh, another, another question here from, from Facebook um, it has to do with aging. Um, have, have there been any studies to look at, at whether the body ages uh, faster or, or slower in, in space? That's a great question about aging, and aging is a really complex process, so we see that in humans as, as we get older, but there's a number of factors involved in aging, uh, and there's a whole lot of research that's been going on recently, uh, things to look at telomere length, so the very bits of ends of your DNA, it's kind of a cap on the DNA in your cells. Uh, it keeps it from fraying at the ends, maybe a few... Uh, if you uh, burn the end of a rope a little bit when you've tied a knot. Uh, those can uh, actually degrade over time, and that's one of uh, the symbols of aging. Uh, we're looking at uh, potential skin aging on board. There's a European experiment to look at that. We're looking at immune function. Immune uh, response is very important in aging. That's why you see things like flu and elderly people. The immune system is just not strong enough. Uh, we also see weakened immune systems on board the space station, and so there's been a lot of research over the years, and there's several continuing studies to look at how our immune systems change in normally really healthy people once we get in these microgravity conditions. Thanks, thanks very much. Now, uh, we're, we're seeing some incredible images of, of you there on the, on the space station, and that's raised some questions. Um, Jeff, uh, question as to why you're wearing two watches. 
And then if you could show us around a little bit right where you are, there's a banner behind you. What's, it, what's that banner and what are some of the things we're seeing? Okay, well, I'm actually wearing one watch and then the other one is, uh, it's measuring uh, the light environment around me as well as my motion. And this is, I'm actually wearing this for just a few days. It's part of an experiment uh, to study uh, sleep and circadian rhythm. Uh, so that's why I have two things on my arm, but the only one of them is a watch. Let's see, some of the things you see, the banner in the back, that's mine. I'm a West Point graduate, 1980, and uh, I like to wave the flag, if you will, and show the Army presence. And actually, Kate, I consider an honorary Army person because she worked with the Army in Africa on a, a medical program over there. So, so the, the Army has uh, control and command of the International Space Station at this time, and I want to <laughs> make that obvious to everybody. You also see uh, behind Kate here uh, a robotic uh, system. That's uh, one of the the workstations uh, that we use to operate the robotic arm outside and we use camera views to, uh, to keep uh, our, um, our situational awareness up as we, as we operate that. Uh, a lot of our activity has to do with taking photography of the earth and here's an example of, of a camera and a big lens. This one is 400 millimeter. Uh, we have all kinds of lenses and uh, they're, they're professional grade cameras uh, that we use to, uh, to try to capture the view out the window. Uh, to vicariously bring that perspective to the folks on, on Earth. And then this, we're in the U.S. laboratory, which is the center of the space station. It's really the heart and the brains and the lungs uh, of the space station. It has all the main computers that operate all the systems throughout the space station. It cleans the air. Uh, it distributes the power throughout the space station. And it also has uh, quite a few different kinds of experimental facilities uh, covering the spectrum of sciences. So just a, just a brief description of what you might see. Well, the, um, yeah, I have to say that in my job at ABC News, I get to interview a, a lot of fascinating people and do a lot of cool things. But watching you two floating around there uh, is, is absolutely incredible. But Kate, this is your, your first mission. You trained for so many years. Is there anything about this being in space that surprised you? Um, what's, what's been the, the coolest part of your experience? So I actually uh, have been remarking a lot to Jeff. I get surprised on just about a daily basis, um, and I've been here for uh, almost a month and a half now. There's always something new. Um, the, there's, a, there's a couple things that really stand out, and one is the view of the Earth. Uh, so we have some incredible photography from astronauts. We have video, um, but nothing had really prepared me for the actual sight of our planet as we're orbiting. And the way our, our orbital inclination hits, we can actually see most of the globe. So I feel like I might finally be able to pass my fourth grade geography quiz at this point. Uh, you really end up getting to know continents, you know land masses, you know landmarks. Uh, and it's beautiful. It's just stunningly beautiful every time you look at it. Uh, every time I look out the window, there's an aurora or a meteor burning through the atmosphere, or you can see the moon rising and setting. Uh, you can see that it'll it'll happen in 20 seconds, uh, a moon rise at the right beta angle on Earth. So uh, you can train for a very long time. There's still uh, pretty much wonder around every corner up here. Well, uh, Commander Jeff Williams, Dr. Kate Rubens, I, I want to thank you for what you do, and I want to thank you for giving us a little bit of your time to, to share that experience with us. For, for ABC News, I'm Dr. Richard Besser uh, here in New York. Thanks very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.